Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you've enjoyed the reading that I gave you last night. Uh, we're going to go over the passages today, and I'm really excited that the Lord Jesus has opened up the word to you and that you've grown in your faith and in your journey and that you are excited about what you've learned in this lesson of 47 prophecies that prophesy the coming of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you for today, and I pray, Lord God, as we go through these answers, Lord, that we would just be richly blessed and that, Lord, we would just grow in our relationship with you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you say and do. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. But we thank you, Lord, for your word that breathes new life into us each and every day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you can see, I already put up one new answer up here. And it is that from Psalm 69, 8, Isaiah 53, 3, and John 1, 11, and John 7, 5, that the Messiah would be rejected by his own people. And again, I'm always mystified how that is even possible that people can reject the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we see that he fulfilled all these prophecies, and yet because he didn't fit in their box, they rejected him. Oh, I'm a good person. That should be enough. No, it is not enough. You have to be in relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says. And the Word of God is our guide through, the, through, through this life. These are the things that God gave us so that we could grow in relationship with him and be richly blessed and stay away from sin and be encouraged and be an encourager to one another. That we would put aside bitterness and live in the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm very excited about, about uh, this passage that you guys got to read about. Uh, but also it is the revelation that the Messiah would be rejected by his own people. Now the second one is Deuteronomy 18, 15, Acts 3, 22, 20 through 22. And what is that passage speaking about? And in your reading, you probably read that it's probably the most obvious answer. And I said that um, in what I shared with you yesterday when I gave you these passages. But it is the fact that the Messiah would be a prophet. Yes. So he would be a prophet. Yes. So, and we know this to be true because of how he spoke and, and what he predicted and what he stated and, and he also knew the fulfillment of and utilized the scriptures that predicted and, and prophesied of his coming, um, even in his own ministry. And he also let us know that of the second coming and of the end of times and what that would look like and the revelation of heaven and life eternal. So we do know that the Messiah would be a prophet. Now the next one in Malachi 4, uh, 5, 6, Matthew eleven thirteen 13 through 14, we have here that the Messiah would be... What preceded by whom? Yes, it would be Elijah. So we're going to put that in here. Preceded, amen, by, and we're going to do it, Elijah. There we go. Very important because remember that there was this conversation between John the Baptist and, and uh, the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees. They were like, hey, you know, are you Elijah? And, and yet we know to be true that the prophecy says that Jesus or the Messiah would be preceded by Elijah. Now the next one, Psalm 2, verses 7, Matthew 3, 16 uh, through 17. And this one here um, is that declaration I told you about. And that he would, uh, the Messiah would be declared, he would be declared what? The Son of God. Yes, and that happened, and I love the story of Peter, uh, you know, the rock. Uh, also the guy that got scared by um, a little a teenager. You know, hey, aren't you that one? And oh, denying Christ, all that good stuff that Peter did. And, and uh, again, like I've said before, Peter gives me hope, amen. He messed up so much, but yet he had favor with God. So thank you, Lord, amen, give me that hope. But we learn from these passages that he uh, would be announced, Messiah would be, would declare, uh, would be declared the Son of God. Now in Isaiah 11, 1, as you see here in Matthew 2 through 23, we also get something that Messiah would be called a what? A Nazarene. And I think that's kind of, kind of interesting, right? Because of the statement, <laughs> can anything good come out of Nazareth? Amen. Well, it did. Amen. And that's kind of a hope for all of us. It doesn't mean, you know, that you have to come from a certain a place, a certain pedigree, um, a certain um, ethnicity, or, you know, a region. It, none of that matters. 
You know, they were even skeptical of Jesus. Really? Seriously? Uh, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Well, uh, yeah, something amazing came out of Nazareth. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus, amen, right? So, again, that gives us hope. God doesn't see all that. He sees your heart. He sees you. He knows who you are and what you are. And so that brings him great joy and delight. All right, so the next passage here, Isaiah 9, 2, and Matthew 4, 13 through 16. And in your reading, what did that reveal to you? I, I know, I know, I know, Diane, you probably might have it, but it is that Messiah would bring light to where? He would bring light. I'm going to write it down. Light to where? Begins with a G. Come on now. Galilee. All right. That might have been a little tricky to find in those passages. I mean, I think it was pretty stated in the Gospels quite clearly. But note the link between Isaiah and Matthew. Again, the reason why we say 66 books of search is there are 66 books in the Bible. And we see that the Old Testament and the New Testament are linked in this completion and fulfillment of the prophecy. So there again, we have in Isaiah and Matthew that he would be... Uh, the light that comes from Galilee. And he would bring light to Galilee. Sorry, the light, bring light to Galilee. Now finally, we have Psalm 78, 2 through 4, Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, Matthew 13, 10 through 15, and then Matthew 13, 34 through 35. And what that tells us what? Is that Messiah would do what? It's something he would do, something, and I said it's how he... He was able to speak to us and encourage us and those and, and that day and today. And it is this uh, that the Messiah would speak. He would speak in. That's right. In parables. So here we have it, the things that we know to be true, the, the, the amazing things that we know to be true of the Lord Jesus Christ. And even in the way that he preached and spoke using parables, using stories to captivate and to break it down so that we would understand of the redemption, of the forgiveness, of the love of God. I mean, all of that was prophesied. We see it in the Psalms, we see it in Isaiah, we see it in the New Testament. These things were to be. Because the fulfillment of this makes it lock silent, absolutely true, no doubt about it. Cash in all your chips. This is the truth. And it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He came. The Messiah came. And he came with a mission to save us. And so I want you to be encouraged by that. This lesson is to encourage you. This lesson is to help you understand and see the love of Jesus Christ and the fulfillment of the prophecies in his walking and living and dying and resurrecting and ascending here among us. He solidified the fact that if we believe in him, if we have relationship with him, if we are not just uh, filled with the Holy Spirit, but baptized in the Holy Spirit, that we have life eternal this relationship with Jesus Christ is incredible and it changes lives and I hope just this little bit that we've read this week has encouraged you now you'll be getting some more questions here in the next several days and a couple of days um, I want you to be encouraged I want you to know that God loves you and we're going to continue on pressing through these 47 prophecies of the coming of the Messiah our Lord and Savior Jesus and I want you to be encouraged right there where you are at you are not alone you are not forgotten you are loved and you are the beloved of the Lord Jesus Christ and of our Heavenly Father I hope you know that and believe that so let's pray Lord thank you so much for this lesson thank you so much for our time together Lord and I pray Lord that our lives would be encouraged that our relationships would be strengthened and that Lord we will feel your presence not only feel, but know that we are your children and that you love us, Lord, and you have done so much for us. Lord, the fact that you did all this long before we were born, long before we cared, Lord, we avail ourselves to you. We fall at your feet and we say we love you and we need you and we are grateful and thankful for all that you have done and all that you continue to do. 
So, Lord, bless each one within my hearing. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says, Amen. God bless you. And I hope you have an amazing day. God bless.